Hey guys, Alex and Dad from 7th Hour Films back again with Doctor Who. Last time around was Bad Wolf. What was on that one? Well, after an entire season of clues, it turns out that Bad Wolf was basically a plan by the Daleks to finally... Although we thought all the Daleks were gone because he keeps saying that they were all destroyed in the in the big war, in the time war. <clears throat> Apparently they're back and now they want to figure out a way to destroy the Doctor. That's pretty much what I remember. Yeah, so uh, we ended up on Satellite 5 again uh, in a myriad of uh, reality television shows. Uh, this time with more death than there probably should be. Uh, if you are the weakest link, you are vaporized. Uh, or so they thought, uh, because all the contestants that got vaporized were actually transported, uh, or at least Rose was transported to the Dalek home ship, uh, or mothership or whatever. So, uh, so yeah, the Daleks have Rose hostage, and they thought they could use that as leverage on the Doctor. The Doctor said no, and now he's going in with no plan, no nothing, except himself. And that's terrifying to them. <laughs> so and that's pretty much where we left off. And this is the season finale, the f the end of the first season of Doctor Who. So, and, and a good season. Yeah. We'll, we'll probably end up talking about this after the episode, obviously. But still, an incredibly good season. And I still think, like, if you're going to start Doctor Who anywhere, like, this is as good a place to do it. Yeah. So... <clears throat> thoroughly enjoyed the entire season. Yeah, so... Um... Yeah, there's kind of that. We don't really have a ton to, to say today, do we? <laughs> no. <laughs> now, just... Yeah. We might as well just move on. Might as well just get right to it. Sounds good to me. Alright. You will obey or she will be exterminated! Rose? Yes, Doctor? I'm coming to get you. I kind of feel bad for the Daleks. They finally tried a new tactic and it, he just didn't go for it. I'm surprised they used associate instead of companion. Well, yeah. You know the doctor. You understand him. You will predict his actions. I don't know. Come on, you know that doesn't work. And even if the TARDIS hasn't got any defenses, you're going to kill him. <coughs> you have predicted correctly. Oh. And for my next trick... Makes the question, when does the TARDIS choose to fly, and when does it choose to just materialize? Get down, Ooh. Good shot. You did it. Hey, don't I get a hug? Oh, come here. I'm fucking here. Oh, I'll never see you again. Oh, you were lucky. I was just a one-shot wonder. Drained the gun of all its power supply. Now it's just a piece of junk. Oh, great. Time war. I thought that was just a legend. I was there. The war between the Daleks and the Time Lords, with the whole of creation at stake. My people were destroyed, but they took the Daleks with them. I almost thought it was worth it. Now it turns out they died for nothing. Hmm. Let's go meet the neighbors. You can't go out there! Is that it? Useless. None quite. It's all right. Come on out. That force field can hold back anything. Almost anything. Yes, but I wasn't going to tell him that. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what they call me in the ancient legends of the Dalek homeworld? The oncoming storm. Oh. You might have removed it's all your emotions. How did you survive the time war? They survived through me. One. Is this the Supreme Dalek? Rose, Captain, this is the Emperor of the Daleks. My ship survived, falling through time, crippled but alive. I get it. Do not interrupt! Do not interrupt! Do not interrupt! 
I think you're forgetting something. I'm the doctor, and if there's one thing I can do, it's talk. I've got five billion languages, and you haven't got one way of stopping me. So if anybody's gonna shut up, it's you! <laughs> Okie doke. Harvesting the waste of humanity. The prisoners, the refugees, the dispossessed, they all came to us. The bodies were filleted, pulped, sifted. Sealed the human races perverted. Only one cell in a billion was fit to be nurtured. So you created an army of Daleks out of the dead. That makes them yeah. half human. Those words are blasphemy! Do not blaspheme! Do not blaspheme! Do not blaspheme! Dalek religion? Meh. Since when did the Daleks have a concept of blasphemy? <laughs> I reached into the dirt and made new life. I am the god of all Daleks! Worship him! Worship him! Worship him! They're insane! Well, did you just realize that? Of years, that's enough to drive anyone mad. But it's worse than that. Driven mad by your own flesh. So they're no longer college, they're the humans? Of humanity. Eh. does say the earth will be purged by fire. Yeah. They forgot to mention the giant fleet of flying squids. I can make that work. I, I just want to say, um, thanks, I suppose, and I'll do my best. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> What's that all about then, Doctor? See you in hell. He's gonna be all right. Isn't he? Yeah, Jack's like a cat. He's got nine lives. There's another thing the TARDIS could do. It could take us away. Could leave. Let history take its course. We go to Marbella in 1989. Yeah, but you'd never do that. No, but you could ask. <laughs> Hold on. then it can only mean one thing. We must be in danger, and I mean fatal. The TARDIS is taking you home. I won't let you. And I bet you're fussing and moaning now. Typical. Just let this old box gather dust. No one can open it, no one will even notice it. Let it become a strange little thing standing on a street corner. And over the years, the world will move on, and the box will be buried. And if you want to remember me, then you can do one thing. That's all. One thing. Have a good life. Oh, that is depressing. <laughs> How do you fly? Come on, help me! It is alive, it could help her. It, j grab a hammer. That's what he always does. <laughs> oh, good job, Mickey. He hears the sound, he comes running. Destroyer of Worlds. There's one thing I never worked out. The words Van Wolf. 
200,000 years in the future. He's dying and there's nothing I can do. Well, like you said, 200,000 years, it's way off. But it's not. It's now. That fight is happening right now. And he's fighting for us, for the whole planet, and I'm just sitting here eating chips. Listen to me. Uh, uh, Pokemon, you've seen Back to the Future. Start making a plan. The doctor showed me a better way of living your life. You know he showed you too. But you don't just give up. You don't just let things happen. You make a stand. You say no. You have the guts to do what's right when everyone else just runs away and I can't. I mean, you have 200,000 years to prepare the earth for this. <laughs> you can do it. Boy, it saves on material that they don't need individual ships. Stand your ground, everyone. Follow my commands. Good luck. Now he earns the rank of captain. Now, yeah. makes you wonder how many of those were CGI'd. Well, yeah. And there was this light, and the doctor said it was the heart of the TARDIS. If we can open it, I can make contact. I can tell it what to do. Rose. Mm. You assume she the TARDIS wants to die. take you back. And that's a risk I've got to take. There's nothing left for me here. Nothing? No. Okay, if that's what you think. Let's get this thing open. I fi he finally gave up. The eyes. It's always the eyes. What a Mini Cooper. Eh. It's the strongest car in Great Britain. Identify yourself. You are the weakest link. Goodbye. Ooh. Good job. Yes. You are the weakest link. Ooh, dang it. Goodbye. Cancelled too soon. They're flying up the ventilation shafts. Make them go through wipeout. The ominous choir. Floor zero. They killed them all. There's it's not a Dalek episode without a high body count. He told me to try anything. If I could save the doctor's life, try anything. Well, we're never gonna know. Well, I know. Remember when Dad died? There was someone with him. A girl, a blonde girl. She held his hand. You saw her from a distance, Mum. You saw her. Think about it. That was me. You saw me. Stop it. That's how good the dog Stop is. it. Just stop it. I'm only here because of you. I joined the program because you were on it. Am I supposed to say when this is all over, if we're still alive, maybe we can go for a drink? That'd be nice. <laughs> yeah, well, tough. <laughs> Mum was right. Maybe we should just lock the door and walk away. I'm not having that. I'm, I'm not having you just, just give up now. No, wait. You just need something stronger than my car. Yeah. Or something bigger. Something like that. Rose, it's too bad you were never introduced to UNIT. Right. You've only got this until six o'clock. So get on with it. Oh, where did you get that from? Rodrigo. He owes me a favour. Never mind why. But you were right about your dad, sweetheart. My vision is impaired. I cannot see. We did it! One. already dead. 
You can't hit the ice rock? Come on. Oh yeah, Jack. What about your butt laser? I kind of figured that. Oof. It's ready. But just in the nick of time. What are you, coward or killer? War. I bring my. But this is wrong! My head! Come here. He's killing me! I think you need a doctor. It's amazing that all this power is held inside that goofy little box. Rose Tyler. I was gonna take you to so many places. Barcelona? Not the city of Barcelona. The planet Barcelona. <laughs> you love it. <laughs> Fantastic place. They've got dogs with no noses. <laughs> <laughs> it means I'm gonna change. And I'm not gonna see you again. Not like this. Not with this daft old face. <laughs> Before I go, I just want to tell you, you were fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. And you know what? So was I. Ooh. It's a fireworks show now. Meh. Hello. Okay. <laughs> Chief, that's weird. So where was I? Oh, that's right. Barcelona. <laughs> Anywho. <laughs> uh, well, at least he remembered, which is more than some of the doctors did when they regenerated. Now... Yeah. And the the ending there vaguely reminds me of the third doctor when he absorbed all the poison from the spiders and the fifth doctor when he didn't he save Perry by giving her the last dose of the antidote yeah so it's it's I, I'm not saying it's exactly the same but yeah it, it really does kind of fit in with the whole continuum of Doctor Regenerations. Yeah. Well, and it, and it makes sense with the whole, you know, the time vortex will destroy you. Obviously, that would have just killed Rose if she had, even if she had just returned it to the TARDIS. It's just that he can take it, yeah. but he knows he can take it because he has the regeneration left, so. But that's the end of season one. The end of the Christopher Eccleston era. Well, that's too bad. I thought he was... I thought he was very good. Again, yeah. I and I, I said this pretty much when we had just watched that one episode of Dalek. Uh, I thought I would like him. I really did like the entire season. Uh, he's to me, right up there with uh, Tom Baker, and Sylvester McCoy as 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 my favorites. Yeah, definitely. Now, of course, 
everybody knows I'm partial to William Hartnell simply because I was 11 years old when I first watched Doctor Who living in England, so Hartnell will always be the Doctor. Everybody else is just the Doctor. Yeah. I, I remember, I don't know if it was on my original video or some other reaction video I watched to this, but there was someone who said it was probably a good thing overall that they ended up doing a regeneration so early because, you know, the, the audience is very different from what it was in classic Doctor Who. Yeah. And establishing the concept of a regeneration so early means that, you know, when Christopher Eccleston leaves, you're not going to have, you know, a lot of the audience drop out and be like, well, this guy, you know, not my doctor, and, <laughs> and they leave. The problem is that kind of happened anyway. So that pretty much happens from here on out. And it's going to be a while. <coughs> it's going to be a little while before our next regeneration story. I think, how many have we had in this one year? Because we had the regeneration of the fifth doctor into the sixth doctor, then into the seventh, then we did the eighth, which immediately led into the ninth because that was so short. Now we've had this. It's like, we're going to take a break <laughs> from regenerating and new doctors for a little while. Now, Tenet lasted four or five years. Or, th or did he just do three? Uh, it's three seasons overall and, uh, and a number of special episodes. But um, I think technically it went from here, 2005, at the end of 2005, because his first episode will be The Christmas Invasion, to, I think, like, late 2010, maybe? Or maybe right at the beginning of 2010, I don't remember. Um, so, yeah, so he, he stayed around for a little while. Um, but, yeah, but that, honestly, that kind of, it kind of came to pass anyway, that, like, when David Tennant regenerated, that a lot of fans were like, well, I don't want anyone else. You know, this was my doctor, and so they all left. And then same thing happens after Matt Smith and Peter Capaldi. I don't know if that really happened after Jodie Whittaker. That was a divisive era, to be sure, as ridiculous as that is. But anyway. Um, but it's interesting because you mentioned uh, McCoy. I will definitely say that that part in the beginning where he says, you know, in the ancient legends of the Dalek, home world i'm called the oncoming storm you know that that last little bit of emotion that's still in you that's fear it's like that was such a mccoy speech <laughs> you know that is exactly something he would have said to a dalek yeah. that was really interesting but yeah so where uh, a few episodes ago we had justice once everyone lives uh this time we have justice once everyone died now that brings up my really one and only conundrum with this. They revived Jack. So, theoretically, they could have revived all the people on the station who had remained. Yes. I I just... I think Rose just didn't get to it because, because the time vortex was killing her. She revived Jack, no one else. So... And they didn't show the... They showed the Dalek mothership being dissolved, but they didn't show the rest of the fleet. Yeah, well, it's... It's assumed, yes. Yeah. But then, on the other hand, too, the Dalek fleet had already started destroying the Earth. Yeah. And we didn't see a reversal of that, so... Yeah, there, there's still a lot of damage on the Earth 200,000 years in the future, but... Of course, um, there was in 2150 as well, when the Daleks invaded and took yeah. over the world. So, it, it's not a clean, like... It's not a cleanup of everything yeah. that happened. It's not a reversal of everything that happened. But um, but they were at least able to stop the Daleks, yeah. which is something. Um, which, with the Daleks, uh, new concept incoming, uh, the Dalek religion, <laughs> based upon the emperor or the god of the Daleks. Yeah. Now, an interesting thing you brought up is, you know, you asked, are they no longer Khaled? And technically, no, but they're kind of now just this ridiculous hybrid of their Khalids mutated into Daleks, but they're all based on him. So he's the, the Emperor of the Daleks is the originator now. And so from his cells mixed with, you know, the few working cells of humans created new Daleks. So if anything... 
I guess I don't know. I don't see. I don't remember thinking about the religious <laughs> connotations of uh, of this episode, but like it, it is an interesting thing. Of you know, he created the new Daleks, but they are imperfect. They are not heavenly as he is. He is he is a pure Dalek, but the rest of them are corrupted, basically. So, but even still, now they worship him more than they ever, you know, followed orders, yeah. basically. Now, this is a strange tangent. Um, the man who wrote the novel of The Exorcist, William Peter Blatty, then later wrote a sequel to it called Legion. And I think the most striking thing about that novel that, that made an impact on me is they're talking about, you know, how the how is the devil able to do everything that he's able to do? And Bloody said when Lucifer was cast out of heaven, he broke into a billion pieces, and every human being had a piece of Lucifer in him, and that over the centuries and the millennia, those pieces were all trying to get back together to become Lucifer again. And I, I kind of saw that there. He, the Emperor Dalek says, yes, I have created all of these people, but I'm seeing there that there is a, a possible, as a, as a writer, as an author, saying, what if ultimately all the Daleks began to realize that they could get together and then overthrow their emperor? Because that's what Lucifer was trying to do, trying to overthrow God. So they would all reband together to try to overthrow the emperor because he had allowed this to happen. And I mean, it's very complicated and very <laughs> too religious, anti-religious to, to get into, but that strikes me as a future sort of thing that the Daleks might be, somebody might be thinking, and I'm sure the Daleks do return over the next you know, 20 years. Why, how could you possibly think they would return? <laughs> They've been wiped out for good this time. Yeah, we said that the last time in the Time War. Yeah. Now, having seen The Day of the Doctor, and again, spoilers if you haven't gotten this far, but putting Gallifrey into a pocket universe, why didn't they put the Daleks in a pocket universe so that they would be trapped in their own universe against each other and therefore no longer a threat? And of course, the, yeah. the whole idea there is you can't do that because we need the Daleks as as one of our main villains. Well, yeah. Well, that was... Part of it, too, is that by removing the planet Gallifrey, the Daleks had surrounded it so completely that they would, as soon as they start firing, the planet disappears and they end up just firing on each other and wiping themselves out, was the idea that is shown in that. Even still, we see here, you know, some Daleks are able to escape that. Yeah. So... And of course, none of that at this point was planned because yeah. you know by that point we have Moffat as the showrunner instead of RTD. So maybe they had some ideas floating around, but in general, I don't think that was really planned here. I mean, I don't know how much of the time war they really had delved into at this point, you know, because yeah. we we only heard about it through this season. It was only introduced in this season, but I, I think it was after this that they started going back and being like, okay, well, let's have, you know, an Eighth Doctor story about this. You know, we'll have, uh, like, a, a an audio drama or a, a book or something with the Eighth Doctor going through the Time War. So, um, so yeah, I don't know. Um, but anyway, um, but yeah, just an, an, interesting, an interesting take on on the Daleks. Uh, it's definitely... I like that it's more than just the, you know... You know, they're just robots. They come in, they kill people, and that's basically it. It's like, it's... it's Honestly, I guess it's, it's gone so much further now than the original plan, the you know, the original idea, which was just, well, they're Nazis, and they're, they're standing for that and the genetic mutation and, and the purity and stuff like that, and all that's still there. But now it's like, hey, let's let's toy with some new ideas yeah. about it so um and we had the reveal of the bad wolf that that rose was actually the bad wolf this whole time um which was an interesting thing 
Um, and again, I would love to know the thinking behind why that term, why Bad Wolf. I mean, other than I know that there's a, a production company called Bad Wolf Productions. But it would have, it, to me, it would, and I know this is way too obvious, it would have been more interesting if it was some kind of anagram of Rose Tyler. Yeah. The only thing I would assume is that would be, well, I was going to say that might be too easy for people to, like, figure out and post online. Yeah. And then I immediately thought, wait, this was 2005. I don't know how much <laughs> that was really happening. Yeah. You know, I mean, people were online in 2005, but, I mean, even this season of Doctor Who was not as mainstream as it is now. So, I don't know. I mean, because that's the thing. I remember there was some, I think there was some show uh, that was that had like a twist coming up and apparently someone on reddit had completely figured out the twist and put it in a reddit post and was like I, this is exactly what's going to happen so they very quickly refilmed it with a different ending and uh i remember reading that too yeah and it it, it didn't work it it because that wasn't what they were setting up and i remember i was watching a video about it and it was like well like people should not have to be worried about producers browsing reddit and you know you being so scared of just speculating about a show that's all they're doing is just speculating about a show and if they're right good for them they figured it out you know so so i don't know if that would have been too prevalent i mean you know the i guess this isn't really a spoiler of any of the stories but the mystery box format of each season is pretty much here to stay. Like, this is all, like, almost every season now uh, is going to be the mystery box format. And even, like, nowadays, like, in the most recent season, like, they had the mystery box leading to, like, a what's the big reveal. I don't really think many people were guessing it. I think some people guessed it, but even still, like, it wasn't a huge, we figured everything out about the season. Yeah. So, um, so I don't know if that would have really been a problem. Um, well, uh, and going back just for an instance to the uh, anagram thing, uh, you told me probably last year that there were some spin off series, Sarah Jane Adventures, uh, K9 and Company, and then Torchwood. I would have never, looking at the words Doctor Who, gotten Torchwood out of that. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, I, I always forget that Torchwood is an anagram of Doctor Who, but um, but yeah, that that that's also true. So yeah, I probably wouldn't have seen any sort of anagram of Rose Tyler. So, um, but still, it's and I guess this is another uh, I kind of new concept. I mean, we introduced it just a couple episodes ago, but the heart of the TARDIS. Um, it's interesting. That, you know, they just have the powers of actual gods, not even what the Emperor was saying, but that the TARDIS just has all these powers that can completely wipe out the Dalek race in a second. And nobody in the Time Lords decided to try that uh, during the Time War. Especially because they could have taken it, too. Like, yeah. as, as we see here, a Time Lord can take it, it's just going to cost them a regeneration, basically, you know? But... I don't know. Is it maybe that's just part of? Maybe that's just the one thing the Time Lords are just like we we can't do that. Even with well the threat of the Daleks, he, he had the opportunity to kill them all with his Delta Wave, and he said, "I can't do it." You know, yeah, it, it's literally in his DNA that he cannot do that. But on the other hand, Rose, who is a human being, basically said, "I have the opportunity to stop something, even if it means sacrificing myself," which is what her dad did. So yeah. she says. You know, even if this kills me, I'm going to stop it. I'm going to do whatever I can to, to finish this once and for all. And then the doctor simply says, well, you've made that decision. Now I'm going to make the decision to sacrifice myself to save you. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, so that's another interesting thing. And the whole thing with the Delta Wave, because it, it is kind of interesting, once you actually get to the moment of truth, I, I did kind of think, like, well, are there really any humans left to kill like the Daleks have kind of wiped out you know they've wiped out everyone on satellite 5 except for the doctor you know it's they've attacked the earth and bombarded it it's like it's entirely possible there weren't really wasn't really anyone left and it's an interesting thing 
because you know initially when jack realizes what he's doing he pretty much is just like okay do that you know yes it'll cost it'll destroy the entirety of the human race at least that's on earth but if it will destroy the daleks and protect the rest of the universe you should do it and it's it's an interesting you know obviously in star trek it'll they'll say it's the needs of the many and stuff but it's interesting kind of contrasting that and seeing the doctor eventually just being like i just cannot do that yeah. so i mean it's it's kind of the same like last episode when he you know burst into floor 500 with the gun and you know they say don't shoot and he's just like i wasn't gonna do that and he just gives it to them and then just they move on yeah so it's just not something he can do so and again very serious episode and yet little bits and pieces of humor the two controllers who were left you mean like when <laughs> the end of the world is over we'll go out for a drink I mean, that's, that's just that—that that is the mark of excellent writers who who are able yeah. to add a little bit of humor, and it's one of the things that I enjoy as a director taking serious scripts. Uh, one of the things, one of my favorite compliments I ever got, uh, I directed a production of *The Miracle Worker*, which is the story of how Helen Keller was finally given over to her teacher um, Annie Sullivan to learn how to, even though she was blind and deaf uh, and mute. Uh, that she learned how to spell with sign language and literally came up to be one of the great writers of the early 20th century. And the people who saw that show said, I never realized that this was a funny show. And it's because there is humor. You know, no, no matter what situation you're in, you can always find the humor. And it doesn't have to be, you know, red nose and floppy shoes and you know, clown humor. It's just the subtle humor of things that happen in average ordinary everyday life and that's what those two people did you know we're both going to die but hey you know if we don't maybe we'll go out and get a drink yeah and and because that's the thing because it's such a terrible death not only being killed by the daleks but when they all suddenly realize yeah those bullets don't actually do a lot like yeah you might be able to hit the eye stock but other than that i mean yeah those bullets were not as powerful as he initially said they were but again that was that was one little flaw jack is a trained soldier basically you know uh he may be a con man but he knows what he's doing and yet he was again just randomly firing that gun he should have taken one shot at a time aiming directly at their stalks yeah so um and we have no idea what happened to the the gun that he <laughs> that he used in the last episode so um, but yeah, I do like uh, again just on the the humor, just that quick little moment of like, all right, what's the first line of defense? The android, the from the weakest link. Let's use that. <laughs> you know, it's, it was an interesting thing. It's like, oh, if they had enough budget, it would have been hilarious to see the Daleks going through wipeout. <laughs> like that, that would have just been funny. Just trying to see them. One of them gets hit, ah, and they just fall into the water and explode or something. <laughs> It's probably like a vat of acid in this version. So, anyway. But that was interesting. Um, and even uh, before the Bad Wolf stuff, just the whole thing of Rose just being trapped back in 2005 was an interesting thing. That that dilemma of, like, you know, what can she do? Because I, I like they, they point out it's not just that, you know, you know, she wants to go on this, you know, go on these adventures and have fun with the doctor and stuff like that. But it's the fact that she's being sent home and she just can't do anything to help, which is interesting. Yeah. You know, like we, because I mean, it's, it's something that we didn't really get in classic who just because of the formatting of everything, you know, there, there weren't moments where, you know, I mean, it, it works because throughout this season, We've had moments where we went back to London and we see Mickey and we see Jackie. And so now it's just like, you know, it's just an easy thing. The TARDIS sends her back where we didn't really get that, you know, with like, you know, we obviously we could never send Adric home because, you know, he's from a different dimension, basically. So, um, so that was interesting. And just seeing her just not being able to do something, even though I did think, you got 200,000 years to prepare the Earth for this. You know, it, it's like at the end of Back to the Future Part 2, where, you know, the, the DeLorean seemingly vanishes, and then here comes the mailman right at that exact moment to give Marty the letter. So, um, 
So it's like, you could have tried something, but I don't know. Or, like with Bill and Ted, where they're like, oh, and to get into the prison, we'll put the keys over there. And they go and they get it. It's like, yeah, well, we got to remember to do that later, though. <laughs> so. Now, I just had a, a weird retrospect idea. If this entire season is kind of planned around this whole bad wolf, which it seems to be done, there's one place in the very first episode that they could have put the clue. Rose was the gymnastics person, and she mentioned her school. Well, most schools have a mascot. And if, you know, like, I was in uh, Lake and Heath, uh, England, uh, and we were the Lake and Heath Lancers, you know. You went to Deer Creek. And your brother was, you know, the well, they were the wolves at Santa Fe. If she had said, you know, I was a member of the, you know, East Middleton Junior High School Wolves gymnastics team. Just plant yeah. the wolves there. You know, that could have basically people. Then the rest of the season would have gone. Oh wait, now I get it. Because she's the bad wolf because she was the wolf from the very beginning. Yeah, it's it's interesting now that you bring that up. I don't think there's any mention of the bad wolf in the first episode. Yeah, which is interesting. I, I guess because they were just trying to. RTD was just like, I have to make sure that this episode works, you know, to bring back Doctor Who before anything else. So probably once he did that, he was like, okay, now I can work on the rest of my plans for the season. Yeah. So, so yeah, that was probably, that was probably it. Um, um, and I guess sort of the last thing is uh, just bringing up the, the trauma that the Doctor has over the Time War. You know, after all of this, when they get back into the TARDIS... And they're, you know, screaming, you know, exterminate and you must worship him and stuff. And he's just standing there at the door. And it's just that moment because he said, you know, the the Time Lords destroyed all the Daleks. But they ended up, you know, going with them, basically. And now he looks and is like, and I guess they all died in vain. And just that moment, it's just like that trauma that hits him that the Daleks are still back, you know. And they even reveal in this episode that it is the Doctor that ended the time war the 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 dalek emperor says that that he was the one that burned the daleks and in turn destroyed the time lords as well so it's all that extra trauma you know a, a lot of people when they define each of the doctors especially the the modern doctors they'll they'll put eccleston as sort of the ptsd doctor and, and i can kind of see that of you know a, a lot of times he'll kind of just you know, run away from something or he'll, you know, he'll be kind of goofy. We saw that in the second episode when Rose was kind of like, you know, I, I don't even know who you are. I don't know any of this. You're just doctor. And he's kind of getting snappy. It was like, well, I'm the doctor. That's all I need to be. I'm just me. You know, I don't need to tell you anything else. And so you have that. And then when he's directly confronted by that trauma is when he really you know, goes into himself and you see that anger that you didn't see a lot of with you know, older doctors. Maybe McCoy, but but still. Um, but yeah, so it's just an interesting thing, like, looking at his character, especially because it's such a limited view of it, just having these 13 episodes and nothing else, so. Um, but then, at the end, the, 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 the first modern regeneration. This time it glows and sparkles, and it's <laughs> It, it, it's much it's a much different effect from yeah. from classic Doctor Who, but I like it. Um, I like the newer effect for it. Um, that's also why in all of our classic Doctor Who uh, regeneration videos, I always put that yellow glow around us. Um, despite the fact that that's never what it is <laughs> in uh, in classic Doctor Who, I was just like, yeah, I'll just do that. So yeah, weren't they all just? Uh a, kind of a blur to white and then back down to the new doctor yeah pretty much like i, I think it, it it kind of varied like sometimes it was just a transition just a crossfade basically between them sometimes yeah there was this sort of just glow the whole screen goes white comes back down new guy so but this time it's an actual effect i mean you can you can literally see david Tett's face forming in on him yeah. and all his hair growing out and everything so um, and I didn't notice, I'm assuming that uh, Tennant was wearing the leather jacket yes. at the end. Because it was on his face, I didn't get a chance to look 
at his coat. Yeah, he is still wearing that uh, the same outfit. So, um, so yeah, and I guess this is the part where we go through and give our quick. I'm gonna pull it up. Give our quick thoughts on this Doctor's era. This will be the last time that it's a short recap. <laughs> But uh, but we start season one episode one Rose very good brings back the autons and the nesting consciousness is that it yeah, yeah. Uh, and a, a great introduction he's again he's very active uh, he's got Tom Baker energy and Sylvester McCoy uh, personality so it was a great combination yeah definitely he he didn't feel like any I mean he he felt like individual doctors but. As a whole, it was a very new, interesting performance. Yeah. So, um, uh, what was the thing I was going to say? I don't remember. I'll figure it out later. After that was the end of the world. Uh, taking on corporate greed, which was kind of fun. Uh, again, uh, perfectly acceptable. Uh, I didn't feel it was as good as the first one. But, uh, again, I enjoyed this entire season. Yeah. Oh, and the thing I, I finally remembered. Um, it is interesting because, like, with this season, they don't really bring a lot back from classic Doctor Who. The main thing is the Daleks. Even, like, the Autons, they don't really acknowledge that it's that it's come back. Like, you know, the Doctor doesn't really say, you know, oh, I've encountered these things on, you know, this occasion and this occasion and this, you know... So it it honestly feels like a new thing. It's really just the Daleks where it's like, oh yeah, there's a deep history with it. But yeah, end of the world, a good uh, a good first outing for Rose. Uh, we had the Unquiet Dead, very good. And again, Simon Callow as Charles Dickens, wonderful. And I understand, yes, he he actually tours as Charles Dickens, but that was a, kind of a brilliant stroke bringing him back, and then finding out that the ghosts were not really ghosts, but beings from another dimension who lied to the doctor and preyed upon his gullibility or his sympathy empathy whatever you want to call it uh and then dickens at the end going oh no now i know how to end my story of the mystery of edwin drood and doctor says yeah he won't get that chance he's going to die next year yeah so after that was aliens of london <laughs> Our introduction to the Slitheen. Uh, the Slitheen and the fact that they had to uh, squeeze into these, well, for humans, rather plus size, but for them it was much smaller, which caused them to fart uncontrollably. Yeah. And again, uh, humor mixed with uh, a lot of very terrifying stuff, uh, and you find out that the Slitheen ultimately only want to burn the earth to slag and then sell off all of the the uh, junk. Oh, yeah, which takes us to World War III. Um, which, this episode in particular, you're right, it's like, based on the premise of aliens that, you know, take the bodies of really large people, but they're technically small, so it causes them to fart a lot. And yet, it kind of got pretty serious yeah. of, like, you know, trying to figure out how do we save the world from these creatures, you know? Yeah. So. And then the MP from Flydale North? Yep. Becomes the new Prime Minister. Yeah. And then Dalek. Okay. One of the greatest episodes in all of Doctor Who. Yeah, definitely. Um, and again, to me, the greatest line, you would have made a good Dalek. Yeah. Which even is brought back here because the Emperor Dalek is like, you know, I want to see you become me. I want to see you exterminate. And and if anything, it, it makes sense, you know, why he couldn't do it is because he's already been affected by Rose from this episode. So. Yeah. And after that was the long game. Uh, again, we thought the alien was kind of weird. Simon Pegg, very good. Uh, and the idea that, uh, again, very topical that the the media and the entertainment groups were literally controlling all life on the planet. Um, uh, and then basically saying, hey, you know, we're going to release you <laughs> back into your 
own devices, and as we'll find out later, they don't do it very well. Yeah. And it is a thing of, like, because... It, it goes into the plan of, you know, the Daleks are still in control of humanity, and it just gives them a bigger opening to uh, to further their plans. But even still, it is a thing of, like, yeah, humans, 100 years later, yeah, nothing's actually better now that you've yeah. saved it. But I, I, But I like seeing the consequences of this episode. And then after that was Father's Day. Very, very heartbreaking. Rose goes back to figure out why... Her mom speaks the way she does of her dad, only to find out he's not at all that way. But in the end, he says, you know, I understand what's going on here. The only way to fix this problem is to allow my death to happen. So he goes out and literally stands in front of the car and lets it, lets the car run him over. Yeah. I mean, it's a thing of he he's a good, dependable guy when it counts, you know? And when it doesn't count, and he's, you know, just trying to sell his crap to yeah. someone, then, yeah, that's where Jackie's frustration came get, in. Get rich quick. After that was The Empty Child. Uh, introduction of Captain Jack. Very, very weird uh, concept here that uh, an alien ambulance basically crashes on Earth in World War II, uh, and the ambulance is used to fixing whatever place it came from, can't remember the name, the Chula, uh, with nanites, nanogenes, whatever yeah. they were. Uh, but when they land on Earth, they accidentally inhabit a dead child who had a gas mask on because it was you know during the Blitz, and so they think that's the correct uh, template for all human beings. They go about trying to change all of London until the Doctor and Jack and Rose intervene. Yeah, and it's an interesting thing because we talk... We I remember we talked about uh, I think it was during McCoy's final season or just before that we we had like a a horror episode like in a Vic, in Victorian times and I think I asked the questions like why is it that the Victorian times like they're so perfect for you know this sort of horror element and I think it also extends just to the early you know or the first half of the 1900s because it's like there is something just kind of unsettling I guess just because it's like you know with this two-parter it's like you know this world it's london but it's also not london at the same time you know yeah. uh, just even just like you know all the technologies and stuff you know there's so many things that are different on top of the fact that it's being blown to smithereens you know and then just seeing this gas mask a thing that most people probably will never use in their lives um and is not really a thing that's used much anymore. And so seeing that on a little kid, little kids can be creepy anyway, and it's just like, it's just all perfect for that horror element, yeah. while also having a very, you know, the heartfelt story at the end of it with, uh, with Nancy. Yeah. Now, uh, one of the things about the Victorian era, which people in the Victorian times understood, Robert Louis Stevenson in particular, is the dichotomy of society, not just in England, but pretty much elsewhere around the world is that there was this veneer of civilization, the uh, the royalty, the upper class, the aristocrats, who were supposed to be, you know, the saviors of mankind, you know, we're going to do all the great things. And yet, underneath all of that was the poverty and the sickness and the disease and the war and all the rest of that stuff. So, you know, uh, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, uh, society was literally Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. You had this one group that was very, very good and this other group that was not bad, but was not at the level of goodness that the that the upper class was and ultimately was trying to figure out how could they benefit from the same things that the upper class were benefiting from. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's perfect for horror. Yeah, well, and even just, you know, because you mentioned Jekyll and Hyde, that also just fits in so well with, like, Dracula, yeah. you know? Because you have Dracula, the very, you know, suave, elegant uh, count, and then as the story goes on, eventually you see the vampiric side of him and yeah. that you know is a terrifying contrast so yeah and after that was boomtown uh, again a very interesting uh, treatise on the difference between justice and mercy the last surviving slavine uh, realizes that she's been caught and she she's sent back to her home world they will execute her and the doctor has to say you know am i going to 
take mercy on her, in which case she may go back, because she, anytime she does not succeed, she goes right back to being the ugly Slitheen that she is. Yeah. And again, <clears throat> there's a certain politicians, and p- one politician in particular, that here in the United States can sound like a decent person, and then the minute the spotlights are off, goes right back to being an awfully disgusting human being. And that's, and, and this is way before that, but it does, again, show that dichotomy of, you know, please, doctor, you've got to help me. You can't send me back to be executed. And then when he says, no, I'm going to send you back, and then she turns around and goes, well, then you're just as bad as that. And it's just, like, uh, again, again, the writing of this entire season was very good. And the title, Boomtown, she was literally going to blow up Cardiff uh, in order to open the rift to fuel her getaway. Uh, yeah. The, uh, the extrapolator that they ended up still using uh, in this last episode to create the force field to protect them from the Daleks. Yeah. So, And then, obviously, we don't have the, the thumbnail for this episode, but it'll be on screen too. But we have uh, Bad Wolf and the Parting of the Ways is our two-part finale. Um, again, another good, very much like just tying in every little last thing about this season into uh you know culminating yep. in this and eventually just leading to uh Eccleston's regeneration yep. so and it's an interesting thing too cuz like the regeneration isn't like foreshadowed at the at the beginning or anything it's just something that happens practically at the last second where it's like you know oh well rose is taken the time vortex I can take that and then put it back into the TARDIS, but that's going to end up killing me. Like, it's just sort of, you know, it like, if it wasn't for that, basically, he would have been able to walk away from this whole situation as he is, so. Yeah. And uh, I'm just going to say this because some of you may have noticed if you go back through the uh, thumbnails there. Um, this was just before, I think, just before we opened Charlie's Aunt, so... The gray streak that had been in my hair previous to this is gone because I had to, you know, <clears throat> darken my hair so that I could play a character younger than myself. I will admit, it's... <sighs> these thumbnails have been kind of difficult because I feel like the emphasis should be you. Because you're the one watching this for the first time. But not only are you covered up by the most crap on the thumbnail, but also finding... A goofy picture of you is the most difficult thing to do. I do stupid crap all the time in my thumbnails, you know. But like for each one of these, oh, there, it was darker there too, I guess. Yeah, but. on the uh, on the Boomtown one also, I thought about lighting the two of us up like uh, like she was lit up by the TARDIS. I didn't think it looked that good, so I just went with a normal one. Uh, yeah, I try to find one with you laughing. Uh, the the Empty Child, that one was easy enough. But I try to find one. Eventually, yeah. I just kind of give you up on a gray streak. Yeah. Yeah, so that... By around Father's Day, that's when that that disappears. So yeah. I try to find enough ones with you. It's difficult. Plus, i got to put the <laughs> number over you. i got to put everything else over you. <laughs> so, anyway. All right. <clears throat> but that's where we are. So, next week... David Tennant in The Christmas Invasion. It's time for our Christmas special. Season 2, Episode 0. Alright, so this is, you know, obviously... uh, Alien reindeer coming to kill Father Christmas. (laughs) I have no idea. That's a good enough prediction. (laughs) So, um... Oh, and we will also be doing... At the start of that video, we will also be doing the mini-episode that takes place between the two episodes. Oh, right. So I need to remember to go find that and actually get it, because that is not on this... Write it down. Yeah, it is not on the DVD. So, uh, mini... So. And we'll just put those both into the into the same video. Right. So you'll get two reactions for the price of one next time. Oh, boy. But that is basically it. With all of that said, we're Alex and Dad from 7th Hour Films, and we will see you guys next time. Take care. <laughs> Alright guys, thanks for watching this video. There's a bunch of links on screen if you want to go click around any of those. There's a playlist for all of our modern Doctor Who reactions, as well as another playlist for all of our classic Doctor Who reactions, if you want to go check those out. 
Uh, there's also a subscribe button and a Patreon button on screen as well as other links in the description if you want to go check out any of those. See you guys later.